Hello there. Welcome back. Uh, this is Alan, and uh, this would be lesson 25 in this series. Uh, there are fair, a fair number of things that I want to cover, not, not all uh, in this particular episode, and some of it. As expected, uh, my search for a solution to the uh, command line problem and working with the com uh, my batch compiler and whatnot has led to some interesting uh, findings and uh, things that I wanted to go over have come up maybe a bit earlier than I'd expected and uh, so I'd like to get to some of those things so think of this as not a diversion but uh, actually getting to the point um, first off, the uh, format, I uh, changed the format slightly. As you can see, uh, the, uh, window is taller. There are more lines. Uh, if I can, well, there. We now have 50 lines, which is double what we had before. So you'll be able to see more of the uh, text that I'm typing in. Um, <clears throat> secondly, the build system that I've been looking at, I've been working with, is uh, improved. I can do quite a bit more now. And um, I've added in the ability to break a uh, project up into little bits, some of it compiled and some of it still uncompiled. Like here, I'm working on the command line parsing thing. This particular bit is only part of the uh, command line parsing uh, uh, project. And these are the bits that I, uh, I'm pretty much done with. Well, it actually, in fact, I discovered a little bug. Not exactly a bug, but something I'd like to change in here and I can, I'm going to use that in a minute as an example to show you uh, how the this building thing works uh, so there is that uh, well maybe I'll just go through that example first I noticed uh, I've been putting all this code in here in my asm directory, I have a new directory called CRT, and that's where really like little runtime functions that you normally find in a you know, that, that you don't have to code in yourself. Stir len mem copy put put string put uh, stir cur. Those are things that I'd like to always have. And I like to keep them in separate files. <clears throat> and uh, memcopy, I noticed that um, uh, well, first off, I noticed there, there was a bug, it's a regular old bug, in which case uh, I had this here. And the reason I had that then. Because according to the help for C++ help, uh, the return value, and this is in their words, um, value returned, value of desk. Now, I want to show exactly what this, this help is exactly from the compiler help. What? See? Desk. Mem copy. Death star, source star, count. New buffer, yeah. Buffer to copy from. Number of characters to copy. Return value, the value of death. Now, what do they mean by that? I mean, okay, death is new buffer. So do they mean they're returning the value that I passed in? 
And I would think that that wouldn't be a very useful return value. If, and I didn't test this, but I, I would assume that what they mean is the updated value of death. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. But you'll notice that there's no const here. No, no, obviously there's no const. I'm copying into that. Well, anyway, I decided that uh, the dest return, well, imagine that's gone. And what I had intended to do was return the updated value of dest. But anyway, at some point I was walking through the, some of the other code, and I noticed that d this di here is pushed and then restored. And uh, then, then I thought, oh my god, well, that's dumb. And I, I, I won't actually need this. Then I went ahead and said, well, obviously I need to put this up here. Right? And then I was calling this function uh, from somewhere, and I never used the return value. But I noticed that I passed in uh, a value of a um, hundred or something, and uh, a count of three hundred, and it returned me four hundred. And I thought, geez, it shouldn't have returned the number of characters that I copied. And then I went ahead and then I added this line. So I put this in. Now these here are stacked var variables passed in, and the furthest one away is, according to this help here, counts. So I thought I'm, I should really, really be returning the count, but then I realized, well, what's the use of returning a value that was passed in? They know what they passed into the function, so that's a useless return value. In fact, this is what I do want to, what I originally had, is, is the answer I want to give back. I can imagine you're, if you were, if you were appending to a to a string, let's say, a bunch of other strings, <clears throat> and you called mem copy, that would return you a pointer to the next place to start appending the next string. So now I've got a useful, a useful return value that I could use to keep appending and appending and appending data. <coughs> That's the only possible use I can think of for this return value, which I'm not using anyway. So I'm gonna now I want to update my current project with this new mem copy. Now here's here's the thing. These numbers here at the top give the offset of uh, of the function in where it would be placed in memory. So this is a value that I'm going to have to update somewhere. But, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this down. Two levels. <clears throat> and what I want to do is I want to link this up with this command part obj. And uh, <clears throat> so th this is where that address bit becomes important. As you can see again. Currently, the, the a this address for mem copy is set to 100. But that's not where you'll find that function in this OBJ. These are the. This includes all the stuff that I'm, I'm. I thought I was done with. So in order to retrieve the address where it is in here, I can use uh, the code I used to compile this with, which is in here. And that tells me, scroll down, that mem copy 
it uh, should be at position A00. Now, I want to verify that. So, um, again, I can just debug this OBJ I already have and see what's at position A00. And there it is. There's our mem copy with the line that I don't want. So now I want. So what I want to do now is overwrite this with the new code. Now this was this would be an easy case because there's just one line to fix. But in general, it could involve a lot of code. So I can use my uh, build system. So the way to do that first is to rename the, the ASM file uh, to the name that I want to the name of the uh, object file I want to modify. So first thing I'll do that. Now uh, now th this is the file. This this a new version of this is going to be created. So I don't want this to uh, be called, be named the thing that uh, it's going to be replacing or going to be replaced by. So I have to give this a new name basically, and it doesn't matter. Call it ten. So now, basically, I want to link these two, this with this. This is the old version. This is the new code I want to update. And of course, I want to update the address of where this, uh, of where uh, this ASM code is going to wind up. So I know it's supposed to be a zero zero. I change that here to an A, and then I now I use my special magic batch, batch file that links things together. As a link, similar file first, and then what I want to link with, and run it, and hopefully it should work. Okay, so. Here's the new object file. I'm done with this now. And I'm done with this. Now if I debug the new version and then I assemble at a hundred at A00, I should have the new code. And there it is. With that line replaced. So, so um, okay, I'm going to leave that here for now. I've shown you a little bit of how the new, how my new build system is working, and uh, then for the next one, uh, we'll have a look at some of the code that I've been uh, working on using this system and where it leads to. And actually it's quite a surprising and interesting little path that uh, this command line parsing problem takes us down. So I'll see you then.